When I first read the first script for John Wick, it was first called Scorn, and I remember thinking that it was a really fun action movie, but what hooked me in was the dog, and I'm a dog lover. And I remember I emailed Basil and I said, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm really into this. I think it's the dog. It needs a lot of work, but I think that it's like the most sympathetic character. The bones are really great on this. We should figure it out. And then he replied, I agree. And then we optioned the script. We met with Derek, who was the original writer. We actually had a, a contest with our interns who could pick the best title for the script because we thought Scorn sounded too much like a horror movie. And I remember Basil just goes, let's just call it John Wick. That's the name of the lead character. The actor will love it. And uh, that actor became Keanu. And we started meeting and talking about directors. And Keanu had known Chad and Dave forever. We'd been aware of them, but we never really met them. We'd never done a movie with 8711. And they came in and they blew us away with their pitch, their take on the material, their nuance, the story ideas that they had. And so then the team was born. And we were kind of off to the races. The action genre existed, but was sort of, you know, a little bit, I think, perceived down market. And the spin on John Wick was not only putting Keanu at the center of it, an actor that everyone loved, but really telling it a different way. And the aesthetic and the long takes and the gun foo and kind of all the things that make it specific were born. But we really tried to push the envelope with the storytelling and, and cast great actors. And we keep pushing that further and further. And now on John Wick 4, we've taken it even further. We're sort of, you know, have European vibes. We've left New York. The movie is bigger. The cast is more sprawling. The movie is not just about Keanu anymore. It's a much bigger canvas. So it's been really fun to kind of watch the evolution of that. They've known each other forever. And that deep trust and bond that they have with each other has been there since day one. And I think that has infused itself a lot into the movies. I think that we're super lucky. And because of that bond, it's why Chad is here directing John Wick 4. I think there's very few franchises that sort of have the consistency that we have with this core team of director star. Keanu loves this franchise so much. And both of them are producers on 4, which is new and something that they've both greatly earned. We had been big fans of Donnie's for a long time. We had actually been developing an English language film for Donnie to star in that was going to shoot earlier this year. And when we were discussing who could play the character of Kane, a blind swordsman, father, uh, you know, brother to Wick, Donnie was the first person that came to mind because he is the perfect foe for him. And also, he's such an incredible martial artist. We thought it would be so cool to have, you know, John Wick versus It Man. And Donnie loves the franchise. You know, that's how we sort of got into business with him in the first place. He's a huge fan of the movies. And those always make the best sort of people to put in because they get the joke. They have fun with it. We end up in Paris because John is out for vengeance and really wants to clear his name by, you know, this duel. So one of the initial ideas when we were kind of thinking about what would be in John Wick 4 was this duel. Chad is deeply inspired by Westerns and Japanese films and sort of the idea of making good, the bad, and the ugly. And this duel, this sort of iconic fight was something that we all pictured and thought would be so incredible to modernize and use Paris as the backdrop. So we have the settings all over and basically it's, you know, in classic Wick style. Wick is on the run, being hunted and hunting, trying to gain his freedom. We introduce a new character called the Marquis, who is sort of an emissary of the high table and is kind of like the quote unquote new sheriff in town. And, you know, John has killed the elder and gotten his ring back. Um, and now there's hell to pay. The New York Continental has been destroyed. People have died. There's really nothing left for him. So he is out to destroy the Marquis, played by Bill Skarsgård. And he is here to kill him and destroy everything in his path. And within that, he will be free. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that we love, what I love the most about the Wick Worlds too is where you get a taste of John Wick's past. We had a bit of that in John Wick 3 with Angelica Houston, and we dive deeper into the world of the Rusca Roma in the fourth movie. And so he does go back to Berlin and meets Katya and is trying to sort of help get passage back into their good graces to fight on their behalf. And of course that is met with resistance, but it's always fun to see the sort of Russian roots that he's come from. The sets are incredible, they're big. Everything is huge. We recreated Osaka, Japan on the back lot of Babelsberg. There's bamboo forests, there's shrines, there's water sets, there's dog action, geishas. There is everything in this movie. So I think in a world where people have not been to the movies in a long time, we're really, really pushing for this massive theatrical feeling when you watch John Wick 4. So it's a big movie, we want it to feel big, lots of scale, lots of scope. So not only are the sets incredible, but we're pushing for really iconic locations in Paris, like the Arc de Triomphe and the Louvre, and we really want it to be spectacular. The Tracker was born out of the idea of a kind of classic gunslinger that's following Wick, tracking him, out for money. We, we also wanted to use the dogs again um, because we love them so much and wanted to figure out how to push what they could do even further, not only with the stunts, but how they could seamlessly fit into the story. So we love this idea of a character that was literally tracking him and could smell him um, and was also doing it to raise the bounty and, and basically just for cash. And he is kind of the mirror of John Wick in a way where he wants to get out. I think he sees what John Wick has become and what Kane has become, and he doesn't want a part of that. So it's really about him kind of getting in, getting out, getting the paycheck and heading for the hills. Rena has exceeded all expectations. Not only has she been an incredible human to work with and a great addition to the cast, what was really great is that Hiroyuki really took her under his wing. When we showed up, we started doing rehearsals and the two of them really connected. They're gonna love the action. In this one, there's some incredible car action that is unlike anything we've ever seen. I think they'll love the nunchucks. <laughs> I think that they'll be surprised at the Scott Atkins fat suit sequence. I think the visuals are just gonna be incredible. I mean, every day we push it further and further with the sets and the lighting. You know, the entire movie takes place at night, so it's really sexy. And the fighting is incredible, like always. And I think people expect that from us. There's a lot. We haven't even finished shooting yet, so we'll come up with even more stuff.